Assalamu alaikum. This is Naila and I am a live contributor with About Islam. And today I've got some really good questions, a lot of detailed ones that have already been sent in. So I'm so excited to be here with you all and we're going to go through these and we're going to have a good time. So what I do still want you to do is that you please leave your feedback in the comments. Let me know what your questions are because I'll be going back to the About Islam page and I'll be looking, um, looking to see what it is that you thought. And so I can see if I can give you some more details, if you have some other questions. And you know what? I just really want to know what it is that you think. How cool is that? So I'm going to start with the very first one. And this is from a Muslima. And she says, my husband spends most of his free time with, with the friends while I'm at home with the kids. I told him many times that I wish he participated more in our life and come home after work, but he says he needs to relax. I wish to relax too, but I cannot because 24-7 I am with two little children alone. In-laws are not around. How to make him understand that he is a father who has responsibilities at home? This issue is detrimental to our marriage, and I do not want to live with such an irresponsible person. Now, mashallah, my first response to that is, this sounds cumbersome. It, it sounds disheartening. I, I'm, I'm sure that um, it did this does feel weary when you don't feel supported with your marriage and, and with your family. And so your question is how to make him understand that he is, is a father who has responsibilities at home. You know, he's not here to give us his side, but I believe that he probably does know that he's a father with responsibilities at home. Now, are the two of you in agreement on how he lives out and how he um, meets those responsibilities at home? Then no, not really, because this is where the discrepancy lies. You want him to show responsibility in another way, and it is apparent that he believes that he can do so in another way. Now, first, you don't get to tell him how to parent. Because you don't, he doesn't get to tell you how to parent either. And this is why it is so crucial for couples to discuss these matters prior to marriage. You know, if, if you follow me on social media, you know I am a huge advocate for premarital counseling. And so I'm going to bring it back in and stick to, to the point here. But this is one of the things that happens when couples don't discuss these things prior to marriage. I don't know how you would be a father. You don't know how I would be a mother. And so what I would encourage you to do is rather than trying to get him to understand that he has responsibilities at home, to try to get him to see how this affects the family. What does this do to the children not being able to spend this crucial time with their father in the evening? What does it do to your marriage that when he does come home, you may not even be so happy to see him because you're tired. You're tired from being a mother most of the day and you really haven't even had a break. And I'm, really, I'm even wondering, you know, when does the family, ha when do you have your family time? And maybe you do it other times, but I'm hearing here that time is a really big issue for you. So rather than speaking to him from the position of you are not adhering to your responsibilities, I recommend less addressing this from a point of please. Inshallah, notice what this is doing to the family. Because when you say it that way, the way that you were saying, how do I get you to recognize that you're being irresponsible? It sounds like an accusation. And people don't really respond well to accusations. They actually become quite defensive. And you may even get more of the same behavior that it is that you definitely don't want. So I would encourage you to 
Be cautious of the word choice that you use because you don't want to sound accusatory, but you do want to be able to get your, 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 your point across. The next uh, thing that I would suggest is, you know, behavior changes. Even when someone tries, the changes are not going to go from zero to 100. And, you know, I don't know how often your husband, he doesn't come home after work. I don't know if it's every day. I don't know if it's a couple of days. But what you could do is ask him to, if he would consider coming home on specific days after work. For example, inshallah, can you come home after work? rather than going to visit your friends, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now, would it mean that he would still be, he may still be going out the rest of the week? Yes, it does. However, it would be a start. You could start somewhere because you are not going to get a total turnaround just like that. You know what? Let me take that back. Allahu Akbar. You could. However, it ain't likely. So we're just going to keep this realistic. It just isn't likely to happen that way. So let's do baby steps, baby steps, and ask him if he could do this a certain number of days a week. And inshallah, he would see the benefit of it. He would see the benefit of seeing his children. He would see the benefit of having time with you. He would see the benefit of having a relaxed wife. And my, my hope is that if he saw these benefits, that he would in turn say, you know what? I think I want to have this happen more often. And he may do it more than Tuesday and Thursdays. So those are some suggestions that I have for you in regard to that, inshallah. And as always, make dua. You know, Allah is definitely Akbar. And he is the turner of hearts. And he is able to turn all of this around. Not just in your favor, but for your husband's benefit and for the, the children as well. Inshallah. Right. So, I'm going to move on to question number two. Well, I, find while, I found while going through Ask the Counselor. I'm glad to know that you're going through Ask the Counselor. Keep doing that. <laughs> a particular question put by a sister, which goes as a second wife. He divorced me out of fear. The counselor advised her to move on. Indeed, if that is best for that sister, Allah only knows. To conclude, she was also advised to submit her question on Ask the Scholar as to whether she was indeed divorced. Otherwise, there are many questions on unfaithful husbands having illicit affairs. While is it, it while it where is it is advised to the wife to be tolerant to save the marriage, to consider several aspects before she divides, decides to divorce, even though the husband could be your serial cheater, disloyal, etc. She isn't asked to move on just as a second wife is is asked to. I just want to know for a second wife, why such an answer? Because she also wants, because we scroll down a little bit here so I can fully see the question. Because I just want to know why for a second wife, why such an answer? Because she also wants and needs her husband. I ask for forgiveness I, as I am not as knowledgeable as you. Um, truly, indeed, we know that Allah knows best and he knows what we know not. But this has been causing great turmoil in my mind as I want to know what are the chances for a second wife. If every second or third wife would be asked to just drop the marriage and move on because her husband has been pressured by the first wife and has not been able to cope and stand for her. However, still he loves her second wife, then I fear there would be a z there would be zina instead of halal relationship. All right, there's a lot of stuff packed into that. So I'm gonna go back to the top 
and I'm going to address this bit by bit. Okay. Number one, I want to, I noticed that it says that the husband divorced her out of fear. So I'm keeping that in mind. All right. Secondly, I'm also going to keep in mind where you were saying that you were scrolling through about the counselor and you were reading the questions and the answers, which I think is absolutely wonderful because I know that there's great advice here. But I don't know the specific context. I don't know the information uh, in which the re responses and the, and the feedback was given. So I cannot speak to that. I don't have enough information to say why. However, I've been doing this long enough to kind of figure out where you may be at with this because I hear this a lot. And the question is, I hear so much. Naya, please tell me. For what reason do we tell women to be patient with the things that an unfaithful or a cheating or an abusive husband does? Why are wives giving this response? It's frustrating. Well, I'm going to give you my response because I have a different take on that. For what reason were they giving that advice? I do not know. As I said, I don't have the context. And I'm speaking in very, very general terms. What I am going to advise any person, male or female, because we cannot act like men are the only ones that are doing things wrong in marriages, because that's not true. We cannot act like men are the only ones who have, the, who, who have a history of abuse and, and cheating and infidelity because it's not true. I am a marriage counselor. I work with I work with hundreds of couples all over the globe, and I can affirm and tell that it is totally not the case. So, for anyone, male or female, husband or wife, in regard to having patience, you want to have patience with someone who is showing effort. You want to have patience with someone who is trying. You want to have patience with someone who is showing through making dua and uh, in, in improving their practice that they really do fear a lot and they want the situation to be better. You have patience with someone who is making steps to be better. That is what patience is for. If someone is not taking any steps to be better, patience means just sit here and wait for them to just change on you one day. Just one day you just going to miraculously wake up and they will just be a better and a changed person and you just need to wait it out. That's foolery. And I know that many people are being advised to do this, but the law says that we do not accept oppression. We do not accept oppression that is against us, and we do not give oppression. No Muslim should have to be um, at risk or living in such conditions. Now, I'm not going to say that the first time you see something, say, mm, that's it. I'm out. I'm leaving. This is oppressive. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying you spend some time trying to repair the issue. You spend some time trying to recover the issue. You spend some time trying to decide what is change going to look like in our marriage. You spend some time making sure that the husband and the wife both know what they are supposed to do while this change is taking place. Now, does that always happen? Hmm. Most people don't recover that way. But those are the steps for recovery. And that are the thing. That, that, that is what you, get, be, you are patient with. That's an attempt. You know, that's someone showing effort feasibly lack. I do not advocate for someone to sit and wait for their abuse to stop. Again, I do not know the context of, of those questions. 
but I'm speaking in a very, very general context. I am also going to say that sometimes we go um, to someone for advice and they give wonderful spiritual advice and they give wonderful Islamic advice, but they don't always give the best advice on how to help someone with their human behavior. Okay, did y'all just see Mackenzie, my kitty, has just made his official About Islam debut. He's running through the house. <laughs> but <clears throat> we also have to have advice on human behavior. And this is how you break those things down into the steps. That, and these, this is very often the component that, that's missing. So I'm going to go back... Um, to to this um and you asked you you asked why is it that second wives are just told to move on now i'm going to say in regard to this issue i do see where you said he divorced her out of fear if you're divorced you are going to have to move on there's nothing that you can do about that if if you are divorced and it's after the third talaq 